oh my word, you guys, we have so much going on. I'm still trying to finish up down here. I'm still completely covered in poison ivy. We're trying to get stuff ready for graduation celebration, but I want to give you guys today a homestead update because we've had some big changes, big things going on. So I've got a garden to water, but I'm going to show you a lot of footage from what's been going on around here, give you an update, what's going on, and just our prayer for God's work through our lives. So if you're ready to hang out, let's go hang out and talk all things homesteady. There is over here, there's like a little beach area. There he is. Oh my goodness. Sorry you guys get end of the day sweaty, gross, messy, but I am up here in the flower field getting some watering done so we can call it a night. But you guys, a lot has been going on. And now I have the loudest hose known to man because we just switched out which hose was connected and so it's making a ton of noise. Um, you know that we've lived here on this property for, oh, about nine years now. And when we first moved here, we um, had been based in the Charlotte area of North Carolina and wanted to come out to the country more up towards Asheville. And um, we were wedding florists and wedding coordinators. And um, we did a lot of weddings. <laughs> we used to do like a hundred weddings a year. I did floral design. My husband and I did wedding planning and coordinating and all the wedding things you could possibly imagine. Well, when we first moved here, we were like, man, we should start growing our own flowers because holy cow, there's like a lot of space and it goes all down there and back behind trees. Like there's a lot of space. And um, the funny thing that you don't learn or you don't realize maybe at first is that you can't be doing weddings full time and also growing all of your flowers. It just is not possible. And so for all the years that we were first here, we wanted to grow stuff and do things and just didn't have the time. And then life transitioned. Uh, we moved into ministry. We kind of just went a different way in life. And so I just never really thought about it. And we were busy with our kids and homeschool and everything we did here and starting our church and so many other things that it just never really thought about it. And um, one thing that's always kind of convicted us is that we do have this beautiful space you know it's, it's about eight acres just under eight acres um, it's not the biggest piece of property in the world but it definitely is a lot it's more than enough for us and we've never done anything with it it's honestly just the thorn in our flesh where we love not having neighbors but um, it's just a lot of work it's a lot of mowing a lot of weed eating it's a lot of just nature taking over and us not having the ability to keep up with it and so this year, honestly, while we were ridiculously sick and stuck inside, we said enough's enough. Like we need to do something. We, this is where we are. This is where the Lord has had us for nearly nine, well, nine years now. Um, we need to do something with it and we need to use the land that we have here and find a way to make it a space that can be productive. Um, and so the one thing we know is flowers. Like we don't, we don't have many skills, but we know flowers. And so we started, um, we started up here. We started building these different beds and I've added to it. Um, we've got the lilac and vine channel, which desperately needs to be updated, but I'm sharing, you know, flower stuff over there. And then we've really just been talking about it more and just really praying over what are we supposed to be doing with our lives? Like, what is it that we need to be focusing on and we need to be doing? And then to top it off, sorry, of course, everything's making a ton of noise now that I'm out here trying to talk with you guys. Um, 
And then we ran into this problem of coyotes. I shared this last week in my home study update that we have a major coyote problem. Down, well, you can't even see it up here, but down at the bottom of our property where the creek line is, across the creek is um, somebody else's property. And they have it completely overgrown. It's a straight up jungle over there. It's a huge mess. And there is a whole pack of coyotes living over on Yo Dude's property. Um, North Carolina is really having a major coyote problem. Um, really a lot of the Southeast is. And uh, we have coyotes rolling up. Literally, they're coming up in here. That's like our house and our personal yard space, like right up there next to the house. We have outdoor cats, we have our dogs, we have our kids. And we see coyotes down there, that white building down there behind me, past the pool, if you can see. Um, they're passing by, they were passing by there all the time. They're getting way too comfortable being around in our property. That was a big issue. The other thing is this field down here, going into all those trees, past those sticks, all the way down into the trees, is where we're planting literally hundreds and hundreds of sunflowers. Like, well, today I planted hundreds and hundreds. Total, we're gonna have like 8,000 sunflowers down there this summer. Um, we need deer to not eat our sunflowers or there goes, you know, our whole idea here. Um, and so looking at the coyote problem, I promise this is all relative, it's all together. Hi, Mr. Gold, that's Marigold. Um, between wanting to grow flowers, trying to figure out what on earth the Lord has in store for us and needing to deal with this coyote problem and make sure that we don't have deer eating our sunflower crop because that's kind of the money crop we're banking on here. Um, we needed to come up with something. And so as the Lord's luck would have it, we brought up this conversation with our chiropractor who we love. He is the best and he's lived in the area his whole life and he's just so wise and a loving man of God and we just adore him. And we were talking with him about our problem and he was like, I've told you guys, you need a great Pyrenees. That's what you guys need with your property. And you know, he knows we'd like to get more chickens and we would love to get a couple sheep or goats to help us um, eat away all the poison ivy and the stuff that we don't want. Um, he was like, you guys really need a great Pyrenees. And so my husband was like, all right, look into it. Cause every option we're looking at, right? Like it's not, it's not good when you have a pack of coyotes essentially as your neighbors. And so it was just such a cool thing. We were so in prayer over this and we just so happened to find this amazing family, homeschool family, Christian family, like just beautiful, beautiful family that doesn't live too far away and just so happened to have two little great Pyrenees ready to go to a home. And they have been raised on a farm, mom and dad right there with them, kind of learning the ropes and how to protect the property and the chickens and they had sheep and goats and everything else. And so it was just such a crazy thing that we were able to go and get these great Pyrenees. So we have Thaddeus and Theodore and um, they are the cutest things in the whole wide world. They are already so good. They're four months old and we are, they're settling in wonderfully. We're teaching them the property line and everything else. And they're getting used to our animals and learning who they need to be protecting. And now we have all these new baby chicks and everything else. So like they're doing a wonderful job. And so that meant that kind of this next phase here, I really do have this vision of what we could do here and how it could be used. Now, if it's gonna be a reality and everything else, I don't know, okay? I, it's, it's up to prayer and I'm just going with these really strong feelings that I keep feeling the Lord kind of put upon my heart and just upon our family. And that would mean that we need our barn down there, whoops, behind my head, down there by the tree. We need our barn to be a usable space. This barn has never been a usable space. It was kind of full of junk when we first moved here that old tools of the property owners that he just keeps in there, which is fine. I mean, we don't use it. Um, some stuff that was just left behind. My brothers and their friends used to work on cars in there. So then it collected a ton of their junk. Um, and then it kind of just became the junk catcher. I mean, just things that needed to go to the dump or needed to be taken care of kind of just accumulated in there. And it's also seen a lot of um, 
decay. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in there. And um, we'd always hope that maybe it could be like our church building or like we could do something with it. And we've just never had that ability. And so um, kind of getting to the spot where we're like, okay, we need a barn space to be a functional barn space. It needs to be cleaned out. Um, there is so much junk and so much just random stuff in there that needs to not exist in there. We need to clean that out so that way we can see what needs to be fixed. So then we could pray and figure out a way to fix the things that need to be fixed. But then it means that we could set up fencing and give Thaddeus and Theodore a great space that they could be. Remember, down there in that lower field is where the main Coyote Highway seems to be. We want their presence to be known by these coyotes so these coyotes can learn that they need to go find somewhere else to hang out. Like, they're not going to pack up and leave that property across the creek, I'm sure. But they need to know that our yard isn't their hangout spot. And our cats are not their buffet, let alone our dogs or our kids. And um, the deer need to know that they need to go hang out in a different area as well. And so we all went down there. Holy schpoly, you guys. We had been working our rear ends off, clearing stuff out, getting rid of junk, getting rid of just overgrowth. There was so much overgrowth from just years of it kind of just being down there old rolls of fencing that we had moved down there had to be cut out and pulled out. Poison ivy for days, thus my arms currently looking like they do because I'm completely covered in poison ivy. Um, but poison ivy everywhere, honeysuckle growing through everything and just being a complete and utter nuisance. Um, it's been a lot of work and we're not completely done. We still need to finish clearing it out and then we have the like, trying to fix it, making sure that structurally we're, you know, taking care of some issues that are down there. And then we can get to the point, hopefully soon, of like making it a little bit prettier and not so just gross. <laughs> so that that's the one day we'll get there. Um, we even had an old couch that was down there that we needed to take to the dump when we got our new one like three years ago. Um, so we set that up and the puppies are absolutely loving that. So Thaddeus and Theodore have a great space down there. Um, the baby chicks are in the basement for another week or so just until they're fully feathered and then we will add in a um, chicken tractor space for them. So they will move down there and be down with Thaddeus and Theodore as soon as um, they're safe to be down there and they'll be able to regulate their heat and everything just fine. So the barn is finally going to be a barn space. It's going to actually serve a purpose other than holding junk. It will be a space for Thaddeus and Theodore to have a um, just a, you know, a safe space for them where right now they're out there. So any coyote activity they see, they have a large fenced in area that they can bark to their heart's content. And even at only four months old, their barks are quite impressive. Um, so they can make sure that they're kind of telling stuff to go find somewhere else to hang out. Um, but then it also gives them a safe space to sleep and, you know, kind of be protected from any of the elements and things like that. Um, eventually our goal is that, you know, they will really come to know the property line and they will be able to roam, uh, the property is the goal for them. Just like our dog Zoe, she's really good at that. We just don't leave her out at night. She is the, the kid protector. So she does come in at night. Um, but Thaddeus and Theodore will ideally be the farm dogs that are out all the time. They do not come in the house and they will be able to roam the property and take care of everything. So getting this barn fixed, you guys, has been quite a job. And like I said, we're not totally done. We still have more to do. Um, we've got to get through graduation and getting a couple other things done. But seeing the barn down there being used finally for like a purpose that's more fitting, knowing that we're working on it and really just trusting that we're doing what the Lord wants us to do. I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of unknowns. I, I don't know what to, what to say to all of it, but I want to be used and serve where the Lord wants us. And if it can be here growing flowers, if it could be, you know, raising 
chickens and other things, if it could be having a space that we can host people and we can do some of these conferences and, and homeschool outreach and things like this that we've always wanted to do, then I am totally on board. But step one before we can do any of that is we gotta take care of this barn and we gotta get it cleaned out and put together. So this was our big day of cleaning and getting it all at least somewhat usable, getting the fencing up, getting all of the junk cleared so that way Thaddeus and Theodore would be set and ready to go. And now I feel like we have a little bit of this open canvas to start figuring out what's next, to start putting together these pieces of whatever it is that the Lord is putting in store, lining up here is these next steps for our life. So thank you guys for hanging out with me and seeing our, our big, huge day of cleaning the barn. I mean, we spent more time and gave it more attention than we ever have in the past nine years combined. So it was really nice getting all of that done. And of course, introducing Thaddeus and Theodore to you all. They are just absolutely the best. And again, the family they came from, just such a blessing. Um, and to know now that the animals are protected, the property is protected. I'm not gonna have deer just up here munching away all of our sunflowers. And my kids can be outside playing without fear of a pack of coyotes running up on them. Kind of a huge thing. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm going to finish all of my watering here because it takes a while. Luckily, it's one of my most favorite times of the day. If you guys want a little something else to watch, you can watch that video right there. Of course, we have our podcast coming out tomorrow, so come and stop by. It's going to be a special one this week, and we will see you all right back here in the next one. Bye, friends.